So I wanted to make this video to show everyone what I think is one of the best ways to set up and run a home media library. And what I mean by a home media library is just a way to watch all your stored video files, like your TV shows, movies, and things like that, or personal videos, and stream them to any screen you have in your house. So whether that's a tablet, or your phone, a laptop, or a TV, a monitor, or whatever, um, you'll be able to watch all of your video files in one place. So what I use to do this is an awesome app slash program called Plex. If you've never heard of Plex, it's basically just a piece of software that allows you to stream any digital media files, so that's either your photos, music, or videos, to any device that has Plex installed on it. Now, I personally use it mainly to stream videos, for example, just mainly for watching movies from my home movie library, which I have stored on my computer, and I can stream those movie files to any TV or screen in my house. But you can also use it to stream, like I said, TV shows and your home videos as well, game uh, footage recordings and things like that. It's essentially capable of playing back just about any video format you can think of. So I'm going to show you how it all works and how I have it set up in my house, then dive a little deeper to show you really how easy it is to use and hopefully you have a way to conveniently apply it in your own world and set up. And by the way, the version I use is completely free, although there are some paid features which I'll talk about a little later. Alright, so before I demo the Plex software on all my TVs and show you how it all works, I just want to show you how to go ahead and get it installed and set up on your computer. So first thing is, just go to Plex, search for Plex download and click it. And you'll see here you can download the Plex media server, which is what we want to install. You know, either whether or not you're installing on your laptop or your or desktop. And you click download and you'll see it's available for Mac and a couple other operating systems or if you have a NAS. Um, but I just use Windows as I assume probably most of you guys do. So go ahead and just click download and let we'll let that download. And when that's done, go ahead and launch it and click install and then click launch. So that will pop up the web UI. You'll see here, this is the interface that you use to um, get into Plex. So you can see here, uh, you run your media server on the computer as I, as I mentioned, scans all your media and library or you can pick the specific li library which is what I'm going to show you and then you can play that media on any screen that runs Plex, right? Um, or any system that you have run Plex. So if you have Apple TV or a um, PlayStation or whatever kind of device that's able to run the Plex app. Here it's gonna uh, say, well, this is my debt, so it's just gonna, it's naming the server that's installed, so let's include that um, that name of desktop. I, I don't want access outside my home right now, just um, you might want that, but I don't really watch TV on my phones and tablets outside my house, so this is just a little extra security to not allow um, that configuration. So I just uncheck that. And the next thing is, is the important part here, where you're gonna choose your media library. So I delete the these default ones that it's trying to search because that's not where I keep my files and what I want to do is go ahead and click add library um, the first thing is you can see you can select you know what kind of um, uh, library file type you want to select so my first one is going to be movies I'm gonna name it movies and then you browse to your media folder and now like I mentioned before um, I have all my media on um, this M drive and I'll kind of show you how it looks in Windows so you can see my PC, I have my media um, folder here, which is a four terabyte uh, Western digital hard drive I have in my computer. And that's where I keep my entire movie library. So you can see I have three folders here. One is downloads, where I download torrents and files and stuff off the internet, video files generally to watch. And it goes into this default download folder. I have my game footage, which is where I keep all my gaming clips from Battlefield and things like that. So I can view those on um, any device with Plex TV. And then my movie library, you know, I have some concert um, files, and then these are all the movies that I own um, that I have on my hard drive, right? Some, most of my favorites. So all I'm doing is picking that, pointing Plex to that movie library. So I'll click that and click on movies, and I'll just add that, and then it adds the library. And you can see down here, it's going to scan all that stuff. I also, I also want to um, pick other videos, and I'll put. Um, game footage, I'll name it game footage and then I'll point to that uh, game footage library. I'll add that library and then finally I want to add um, what we'll call it other videos. Um, this is going to be my general default download folder like say for torrents. So I used to use news groups, I don't use that anymore. Um, torrents seem to be pretty good. So we'll click that and uh, downloads. So all the all this um, 
all my files in these three folders are going to show up. Now, the next thing it says is get your Plex app. So you install that on whatever devices you're going to watch Plex on. Um, you know, like say if you have Apple TV, you'll need to install that app, or if you have iOS device or tablet, install it on there. And um, we'll run through that a little bit later. So there we go. Now it's go. It's what it's doing is just scanning my library. We're gonna go ahead and let that update, and then I'll come back. All right. So once Plex is done scanning all your media files, it should look something like this. You can see I just have you know I just keep Plex running down here in the system tray. I just I just have it start uh, when Windows starts up. Um, it takes about 250 megabytes of space on your hard drive. Um, so it takes up a little bit of space, um, but it's really resource not resource intensive as far as using your CPU and everything like that when it's just kind of running in the background. Okay, so anyway, here we are, it, which is kind of what it looks like when it's all done. You can see these movies that I recently added, um, some TV shows here, and um, here's a, a video I took from my drone. And, you know, you can play it within this web browser, and you can kind of play it you can kind of play it. Sorry, that's a little obnoxious with the sound. But what I was saying is you can play this in any web browser. So if you're on your laptop, all you have to do is go to plex.tv and you just sign in and you'll get this same interface and you can st and the movies will just stream to your laptop. But anyway, the other thing is this Plex Cloud. So if you don't want to store all your movies on locally on your hard drive, you can store them up in the cloud using Google Drive, Box, and uh, Dropbox. But you know you just got to have a lot of space and it takes time to transfer them up there. So you can set it up on your cloud, which is cool. Um, but I just like having everything locally stored and uh, controlling it just on a physical hard drive um, within my house. So anyway, that so anyways, that's what it kind of looks like as far as the web um, UI. You can see I have all my movies here, just ready to be accessed and streamed. Uh, and the the user interface is really just kind of it's very clean and simple. And it looks pretty nice, you know, it's no no real frills, but it just is functional and it looks nice. So if we go out to the computer in my garage, I'll just show you real quick how if I just say say I go to Plex. Go to sign in because of course you have to create your account when you first install it. So go goes ahead and signs me in. Then I go up here, click on launch, and then you can see the same user interface here. And I don't have Plex ins I don't have Plex installed on this computer. This is just the web, um, you know, the web app. And from within here, we can go ahead and watch, you know, whatever movies or whatever files we have recorded. But you can see here, you know, I have my recorded uh, Battlefield footage, so I can watch that anywhere. I can watch it on my phone and everything, but I just kind of want to show you how I have it um, set up on the laptop where it's not really installed on the laptop itself. It's just accessed through the web, and you can see it's very smooth, and it's, it's pretty awesome. And you can full screen this, of course, but, um, you know, and it's just like watching your regular movie, so pretty awesome. And here's just another example. So, you know, here's my wife's laptop. So all I have to do is just kind of turn this on. Sign in here. You know, I can go to a web browser here, open a window, go to Plex. Go to sign in. Uh, once I'm signed in here, you can just go ahead and click launch and again you'll be presented with the web UI with access to all um, you know all your files here so you can go ahead and like watch Logan or whatever it's a very cool works across platforms you know just as long as you have um, that web browser so next I'm going to show you it, how it looks on these Apple TVs around my house all right, so after your Plex Media server is installed, um, there's one setting that I think is kind of important. At least I always make sure it's on. Um, so go into the Ple go into Plex, go under Settings here on the left, then click on Library, and make sure this Update My Library automatically is checked. I think by default it's unchecked. Um, so just save that, and then the way you add files now is you just anytime you have video files, so I have an SD card here for my video camera. 
Um, you might have GoPro footage or iPhone footage, whatever. Any, whatever you want to do, um, whatever kind of video file you have, you just want to make sure that you can copy it over into one of the folders and that the library is updated automatically. So here's the video file here, and I'll just go ahead and put that in um, my download folder. And then once that's copied in, in there, it's going to be available in my library. Now it doesn't do it instantly for whatever reason. It does take like about a minute for it to, before it scans. And um, I haven't found any way to force refresh it that I can remember. Um, but anyways, once you put that in there, it takes about a minute and you'll see a scan notification down here and then the video, you know, the file, whatever file you're trying to watch um, will be available and it, you'll be able to watch it on any of the um, Plex clients you have installed. So I just want to show you that here. It'll just take a second. All right, there you go, is a library scan complete notification, and I'll just show you over here to the screen. Sorry, the video footage is a little bit bad. Just my webcam, but you can see here the file shows up as recently added, and then you can just go ahead and play it. Um, so again, I know it doesn't look very good, it's just a webcam, but that's how you add files and make sure, and that's the setting that makes sure that makes sure your library, you know, is automatically just updated. So um, that's the setting I like to make sure that's turned on. So I'm here in my living room and uh, you know, once you kind of have uh, the, the Plex media server installed on whatever computer that you store all your, your movie library video files on, um, you can go ahead and download the Plex app, which I'm gonna show you here on whatever device you have connected to your TV. So if you have a PlayStation, um, the Fire Stick, um, just about any device that has apps is gonna have the Plex app. I'll show you a screenshot here online on the Plex uh, website that shows all the um, different boxes and media consoles and stuff that can run Plex. That pretty much everything um, can run it. But let's just take a look here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install it from the App Store so kind of run you through the setup process and then just show you what it looks like and how easy and awesome it is really to use. Alright, so first thing is just go to the App Store here and I'm going to download it. So here you see the intro screen, your personal media stream to all your screens. And here we're just looking at my TV screen, my main screen in my living room. So I do have an account, so let's go ahead and sign in. All right, so I'm signing in my iPad here. I'm just gonna enter YV9P. All right, so the account's linked. Well, you can see these are the available servers. So like I was saying, if you have a laptop that has multiple laptops that might have um, media that you wanna stream, you just install the media server on that laptop and they're gonna show up here. So again, my main uh, media library is just on my desktop. And when you go in here, you're gonna see a similar UI. These are all the recently added movies, some TV shows and stuff, um, other older movies, my personal video files here. Um, you know, me kind of just recording myself doing some real racing. So that's kind of cool, um, you know, and then anything you have downloaded here, so, you know, all the movies and you can see it just works and it gives you a nice, you know, presents you with a nice UI. You can play trailers of movies that you own. Um, it has some extra information about actors in the movies and stuff, so it downloads automatically all the artwork for you. And, you know, I don't know how you get your movies, but, you know, if you download them, let's say using torrents or something like that, but I'm sure you guys have your own sources for movies. But however you get your files, Plex is the way to view them to me. It's like the most uniform way to view them across all your screens and devices. It can play, these are MP4 files I just took of my buddy's tree company. They're chopping down this huge tree. Um, so what's great is it plays any file format you can throw at it pretty much. So even if you have non-standard files and um, it's gonna be able to play these videos and dot move, you know, um, H.264 or even 4K videos. I mean, anything you want to throw at it, it's going to be able to play, which is really nice. So, you know, if I go up here to the main movie library, it's going to present all my movies that are on my hard drive. So, it's pretty cool. And you can see it just presents all, it fills in all that um, artwork and stuff. And so, it's just a nice way to kind of organize all my movie libraries. I don't know of a better way that does this, you know, unless you buy every single movie in iTunes or something which is billion dollars but this is another way to do it and um, I really 
really, really like it. It works perfectly. And you can stream things concurrently too, assuming you have a good router that's able to uh, handle all the bandwidth. But see, I'll play a movie down here. While that's playing, we can go upstairs and just turn my Apple TV on in here. You can see that Plex installed here. And of course we can run it in the bedroom. I can watch, let's say I want to watch Beauty and the Beast. Somebody's watching this up here, you're watching uh, life downstairs, so. Really, it's just, it's just awesome. So I, I don't know if you guys know, but in previous videos, I, what I had shown is I use Apple TVs. I don't have, I don't have cable or anything like that. I pretty much exclusively use Apple TVs hooked up to all my, my TVs and um, to my projector downstairs. So I plex on my projector downstairs as well. And I just find it's the most convenient way to uh, watch things. You know, I use Sling TV. This is kind of going off topic, but I just want to let you guys know. I use Sling TV for my regular television, and then I use this <laughs> crazy antenna. But the thing is about uh, Plex is they just came out with a live TV feature, which I'm going to do another video on where you can hook up the antenna to your network, and you can get live TV, so the local over-the-air HD channels on Plex. Um, you can be able to watch all those channels in here, so I won't have to be moving this antenna around to the TVs I want to watch local channels on network stations like ABC and CBS and things like that uh, because Sling only really offers Fox and um, there's some other limitations with a lot of the other um, app providers like DirecTV app and um, who's the other one you know the uh, PS view which I did another video all on those but anyways that solution is coming out I'm gonna do a video on that but I just kinda wanna let you know you know Apple TV is really the only device I use for all my media consumption and it works really great especially with this uh, Plex um, because if you know how to download movies and have access to movie files, it's just the best way to stream it, in my opinion. All right, so here I have an iPad and my iPhone. And um, what I just want to show you is when you download the app, um, you can watch all, all of your media here, just like I've been showing you around the house. And um, they got everything on here, so all you have to do is click on over. The UI is really nice. It does take a second to buffer on the... Um, mobile devices, but there you go. Oops, I guess this is locked. You know, you can watch it on here. Um, I can watch a similar connection on my phone. I'll show you the same stuff there. So, I mean, it's awesome and you can do this anywhere, you know, outside of the house. Um, if you want to do it like that, for riding on train or wherever you're at, going somewhere at school or um, however you consume your media wherever you're at. It just works on mobile devices. Now there is one thing I did um, forget to mention unfortunately. If you're going to be watching Plex on a mobile device, I believe you have to unlock that with some kind of, um, there's a one-time pass subscription. I think it's four or five bucks. So, um, you know, at least on iOS, just pay for it once and it's going to be available on your devices. So that's the only time you have to pay for um, that. There's some other subscription services, a lifetime subscription. Um, which I can kind of show you on screen. It, go, it, it offers you some other features like live TV being one of them to be able to watch um, over the air broadcasts on Plex TV. You do have to have a subscription or you can get a lifetime subscription, but um, that is one. So that's one thing you have to pay for if you want a lot of those other features. But the only time you really, really need to pay, in my opinion, is if you want to um, watch it on your mobile devices, you just pay the one time. I think it's four or five bucks and you'll be able to unlock the streaming to your mobile device. So sorry, I forgot to mention that. And then the last thing you might want to wonder is if you're going to hook this up to a, a, like a home, serious home theater, obviously you want to know if, how the audio is. Well, the good news is as long as, you as, long as your audio files, is surround sound, and um, all your coding is embedded in the video files that you, that you have, um, it will stream that, you know, it will stream the surround sound 5.1, 7.1, whatever um, encoding you have on there to your, your media device, and then you can play that through your receiver to decode it. So there's really no drawbacks to Plex that I... I know of. Like I said, I recommend you guys give it a try. Start amassing your home media library, or even if you just watch yourself up on the, on your big screen, like watching your recorded game footage. I think it's really cool. So, um, check it out. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any problems or issues, let me uh, comments down below, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. But anyways, thanks a lot for watching. You guys take care.